let us now try and understand what the refinery processing of asphalt. Now, why this is important because your bituminous mixture whatever be the name consists of bitumen which I mean as binder plus aggregate particles. Now, if you do not understand how bitumen is produced, manufactured, processed, different words can be used, we would not be in a position to understand the complexity related to this. To give you an example, if you are familiar with a VG kind of a specification, a VG 30 from Vizag refinery is not the same as the VG 30 from Mathura refinery. They are not one and the same thing. Okay. So, what that means? The processing methods here will be different, the raw material that is used may be different and while you will be meeting the spec, the actual rheological response of the material will not necessarily be the same. So, if I make this statement and if you have to understand it, we need to really get into the deeper aspect of the refinery processing. So, but before we proceed further, I need to caution you that refinery processing or petroleum engineering is a four year undergraduate program at any of the higher universities. So, in the next 15 or 20 minutes, I will be discussing with you the refinery processing that needs to be understood from the perspective of a civil engineer and not more than that. Okay. So, we will be sharing some of the lecture notes associated with this and uh, so we will start with what is this crude oil. So, crude oil is definitely not water, these temperatures that are mentioned here are in degree Fahrenheit. So, if it is water 212 degree Fahrenheit or 100 degree centigrade, you are going to have boiling taking place, but when you are talking about crude, it consists of mixtures and you can actually see from this is the variability that you are talking about. And uh, Dr. Nivita in her later lectures will be talking to you about the chemistry and the chemical composition of it. So, as we keep heating it, we are going to see different compounds that are going to come out of it. So, how do the refineries handle this scenario? So, they do what is really called as a draw a distillation curve. So, what is a distillation curve? You can actually see on the y axis the boiling temperature in Fahrenheit and on the x axis the cumulative percentage volume. So, what it means is if there is going to be more carbon the boiling temperature is going to be much higher. So, let us take a look of the uh, one sample of a crude oil. So, when you start heating it, okay, uh, you are going to get as the first get butanes and lighter followed by gasoline, followed by naphtha, followed by kerosene, followed by gas oil and finally, we end up with the residue and which is the residue which we are interested in and in fact, the refinery terminology is vac residue that is the word that they will use here. So, around 800 Fahrenheit and above you are going to get this vacuum residue here and normally the refiners will use this fractions or most importantly the terminology that they will be using is called cut to tell you something about the character of the crude oil. Okay. So, let us take a two example, there is the first example is a light crude, second example is the heavy crude here. So, these are two different crudes and so when we start boiling this and when we capture all the different constituents that they are coming out of it and draw the distillation curve, you are going to get something different. So, as we discussed in the earlier uh, slide, what did we say here? We mentioned that if there is more carbon, the boiling temperature is going to be much higher. So, we look at the heavy crude, we look at the light crude. So, 
if there is going to be a light crude there is going to be carbon is lower and lighter the compound and the refinery terminology needs to be understood what is really called as a cut point. So, let me write it here you may also want to write this carefully cut point <laughs> right. So, now let us take the simple case here you have a light crude you have a heavy crude. So, let us cut kerosene the kerosene boiling point basically ranges from 315 to 450 degree Fahrenheit and if you use the heavy crude. So, let us go from 315 here to 450 here you are going to see that there is going to be a heavy crude is going to give you something like 16 percent. But if you do the same thing with the light crude you are going to get something like 18 percent. So, if for a hypothetical case you are interested in selling only kerosene and if you are given an option of buying a crude obviously you are going to get a buy a lighter crude because you could make more kerosene out of it and you can sell make more money. But that is not life is not going to be that simple here. So, if we have to really understand what is this uh, heavy crude and light crude we also need to understand little bit about what is really called as the APA gravity. APA stands for American Petroleum Institute. So, this is a arbitrary specific gravity definition that is uh, given by the Americans and you may want to substitute the appropriate specific gravity for water here and figure out what will be the APA gravity of water. So, now you will have an idea about what this exactly is this APA gravity. So, if you are going to have APA gravity of uh, higher the APA gravity the compound is going to be much light and in fact most of you if you know it well if you recollect from your uh, undergraduate experiments you will know that the specific gravity of a bitumen can be taken as close to 1. So, if the APA gravity is going to be much higher the compound is going to be lighter. So, so this is what you are going to get. So, if it is going to be asphalt the APA gravity is going to be close to 11, but if it is going to be naphtha it is going to be close to 50. Now, how is this APA gravity going to be used? In fact, if you look at it when it is going to be a heavy crude it is going to be signified by a APA gravity if it is going to be a light crude it is going to be signified with APA gravity and depending on the APA gravity the crude oil prices will be fixed. So, from this simple picture you can actually understand that the price INR of light crude is going to be much higher than heavy crude because you can actually get more kerosene from it ok. So, let us go to the next one. So, we will look at this distillation graph even more closer here. So, again you are going to see the boiling temperature here and the percentage volume here. There are few interesting terminologies that are written here what is called as a sweet crude, what is called as a sour crude and in fact in the olden days I am talking about 1920s uh, people used to taste the crude to find out how much is the sulphur content. So, if the sulphur content was less the crude was sweet and if the sulphur content was more it was sour and based on it the APA gravities also will change. So, if you in fact if you look at the distillation graph the heavy crudes will be aligned to this side whereas, the light crudes in fact you can see the bonnie light as well as the Arabian light is on this side. Of course, the sour crude starts from this side and ends on the opposite side. So, it is not going to be very straightforward to clearly delineate which is a light crude which is a heavy crude. So, normal definition is a kerosene with more sulphur has a sour taste and that is why it is called a sour crude 
0.5 percent and less is taken as sweet and 1.5 percent and more is taken as sour. And we also need to understand that some of this terminology is related to barrel also comes from this. So, 42 gallon is actually taken as one barrel again it was a 50 gallon, but when it was transported through a horse drawn vehicle there used to be a lot of spillover and at the end they will get only 42 gallon and so 42 gallon was fixed as a uh, unit volume of one barrel of crude oil. Nobody transports bitumen these days crude oil these days by a horse drawn vehicle and there are no wooden cask that are designed for it, but this terminology is as of now it is still being used. So, different crudes will have in fact you should understand different cut point some of them are sweet and some of them are sour for different cuts ok right. So, let us take a look at uh, three types of crudes a Boscan Venezuela an Arabian heavy and a Nigerian light. Now, if you actually look at this picture the first line says about something about the API degree. The API degree of this is 38, the Arabian heavy is 28 and the Boscan Venezuela is 10. The first thing that you will uh, understand from this picture is as the API degree is close to 10, the amount of vacuum residue or the bitumen that is available is much higher here. And as you go to the other side where the APA is much higher, the material just has only 1 percent of bitumen in it. So, if you are going to have a low APA gravity, it is going to have high percentage of bitumen and predominantly it will be a sour crude. If you are going to have high APA gravity, the bitumen content is going to be low and it is going to be a sweet crude. Now, for a refiner what is really meant is this fractional makeup is basically important. Now, we also need to understand that these days in fact, these days meaning in the last uh, 3 4 decades no refiner will process a single crude. This will always be mixed and matched because it is really not gasoline on, on the one end that you are really looking at or bitumen on the other side that you are looking at. So, what most of the refiners will do is since the prices are going to be so let us say this price is going to be 100 rupees this may be 80 rupees and this may be 40 rupees. So, what you will do is per barrel these are all hypothetical figures. So, you will basically buy quite a bit of number of uh, barrels from here million barrels of course and then mix them together and try to find out what is the demand. In fact, we our refineries have a commitment to supply petrol, diesel, kerosene, fuel oil to the market. So, based on the demand and the supply different types of crudes will be purchased, they will be mixed, the crude assay will be done from the mixed crude and the refinery process will be optimized so that they always meet the required demand of the industry. Okay, right. So, let us now take a little bit closer look at the refinery processing. So, the crude in, in fact, if you look at this very carefully, you are going to see that there are two towers, tower 1, tower 2. The crude oil enters here, it is heated and as you can see as it gets heated here in the atmospheric tower here, you are going to get gasoline, naphtha, kerosene, light gas oil, heavy gas oil. You also have to understand that these end points are not the same. So, you are going to have 60 to 325, you will get gasoline, 300 to 400, you are going to get naphtha. So, that means these are not precise cut points, there is always going to be a overlap in the cut points. Okay. 
So, as we increase the temperature, we get this heavy gas oil, but uh, increasing the temperature in the atmospheric condition is not really a efficient way of running the refinery. So, what we will do is we will take it to the vacuum and then we start, pro start heating the process. So, again we get the gas oil which will go as FO for or fuel oil or for blending and around 800 to 1050 degree Fahrenheit is the cut point for vacuum residue and this is our raw material for bitumen. Okay. So, now we will be spending some time talking about this production process here. Right. Before uh, we spend some time, we need to understand that the process that is followed in refinery is continuous basis. So, that means the crude oil enters, butane goes out, gasoline goes out, naphtha, kerosene, light gas oil, heavy gas oil and finally, the bitumen goes out and it is a continuous process. The next thing that we need to understand it, no cuts or precise cuts, there is always a overlap. So, two terminologies are used, what is really called as reflux and reboil. So, if you take a look at it, you can actually have some of the heavies that can go out of the top and that is called the reflux here and some of the raw lighter material that can get trapped in the bottom is called reboil, right. So, this basically facilitates what are really called as good and sharp separations. This is very, very important for us to understand because unless we get a precise and sharp cut points, the bottom that we are getting will also be influenced. So, when I say bottom, I am talking about vacuum residue which again gives us the bitumen that we use for our road construction. Okay. So, some of the details associated with this dis, uh, distillation is explained in this side and so let me re-emphasize again lower boiling point. This is the distillation principle is used and uh, bitumen is made up of the highest boiling fractions and it is basically a residue that comes out of it and a second stage of distillation under vacuum is normally carried out to get a residuum of suitable consistency and in fact, this is the keyword, right. So, let us go here and also now understand some of the precise terminologies. What is a cut point? Cut point is the atmospheric equivalent vapor temperature needed to fractionate the residuum from overhead fractions above it. Okay. So, when we are really talking about the processing of vacuum residue, there are many processes that are involved and in fact, you can actually look at uh, this particular thing, you are going to see that there is a solvent process that is mentioned here, there is an air blowing process that is mentioned here. So, let me write it here, solvent process number 2, number 2 is air blowing process. Okay. So, let us understand each one of them very carefully. So, what is this solvent process and in fact, it is written as solvent de-asphalting. So, we take the vacuum residue here, we mix it with solvent and we get two portions here. The first one is called as PPT bitumen, the second is called as D asphalted oil. So, what is this PPT bitumen? It is propane precipitated bitumen and this particular bitumen is bitumen manufactured from such process 
is known to have poor temperature susceptibility properties. This information is necessary for us to understand that when we get a bitumen from a refinery and when it shows poor temperature susceptibility, what exactly is temperature susceptibility that how the viscosity changes is it drastically varying or is it varying slowly. Now, if you have two bitumen and one of them is drastically showing a viscosity change over a range of temperature compared to another bitumen, you can in a sense guess probably that this bitumen has come from a PPT process or propane precipitated bitumen process, right? unless a conscious effort is made to correct it which is normally not done in that particular state. So, there is also another process which is in a sense similar to the PDA process and this is what is really called as the residuum oil supercritical extraction. So, instead of removing the pitch and then using it for a subsequent process here we remove the asphalting. Now, exactly what is asphaltene we will come to know about it in the later discussions on chemistry of bitumen. One more process is there which is really called as the continuous air blowing. Uh, this terminologies are have to be taken in a very general sense. So, there are many patented technologies for air blowing that are used here because normally this air blowing bitumen is used for roofing applications, but still we use the word air blowings when we are talking about paving bitumen, but the process is slightly different. Okay. And, to, and these are carried out to increase the viscosity or require to improve the temperature susceptibility of the residue. So, as you can see there is a flux feed, there is a heat and this is the tower in which this process is carried out and this is the binder that is coming out of it. Okay. So, now let us take a small uh, uh, break here to understand what exactly are this process. So, I have vacuum residue and this vacuum residue let us say viscosity at 60 degree centigrade it may be have something like 200 points. My customer wants a VG30 bitumen having a viscosity at 60 degree centigrade of 3000 points. Now, the question is how do I get this 2000 to 3000 points? If I use air blowing, I take this material from 200 points to 3000 points by appropriately optimizing the conditions that are explained here. The time duration, the temperature and the flow rate of oxygen. In the PDA based process, what we normally do is we take this 200 points material, we make it into a pitch that might have a viscosity of 20,000 points, but what we wanted is only 3000 points. So, this will be the viscosity of the pitch. So, I add many material I am going to call them right now as extract. So, when I add an extract of some proportion to it I am going to get a 3000 point. Typical proportions are used in industry in India are 15 percent of extract, 85 percent of pitch. You can imagine them to have be more or less in the consistency of carbon black and coconut oil. That is the consistency you should imagine. So, when I make a bitumen with air blowing process in which a 200 points material goes to 3000, its properties are different compared to a PDA process in which the material goes from 200 to 20000 and comes back to 3000. They are not one and the same. Now, let us take a look at 
one of the bitterox plant which more or less uses this process and you will see that in real life a combination of blending and blowing PDA blending and blowing happens. So, you have the crude oil mix coming here atmospheric distillation this is called as long residue and whatever comes out of it is called in refinery terminology as short residue or SR. So, you have a vacuum distillation unit and then it also has a PDA unit and you get a PDA pitch here this is the bitter rocks plant. So, a yeah, one input is the PDA pitch another input is the extract that comes out of it and these things in addition some amount of vacuum residue is added. So, you are going to have extract which is a low viscous material, pitch which is a high viscous material, vacuum residue which is nothing but our short residue which comes here and that is something called as the vacuum gas oil. So, all of them are subjected to a composition blending and depending on the viscosity correction that is needed some amount of air blowing is also carried out. So, this is the typical process that goes in one of these things. So, now let us go back again to the classical uh, uh, AACE crude type that we saw here and you will be you will notice that A is of course, a high API material E is the low API material. So, E is bitumen rich A is a material that has hardly 1 percent of bitumen. So, as the carbon number keeps increasing the cut point that is needed also increases. So, you are going to see that a crude type such as E you can let us say you are interested in getting a viscosity at 60 degree centigrade 2000 points you could get it in this temperature range for a material crude source such as E which has an API of close to 10 whereas, if you are looking at the material such as A you have to go all the way up to 1100 degree Fahrenheit roughly. So, you have to really cut it to that much temperature to really get your bitumen. Of course, both of them will have 2000 points, but one material has been cut to a high temperature, another material has been cut to a low temperature. So, we need to be aware of it. So, the details are given here and we understand that to yield an AC 20 a cut point of 1190 degree Fahrenheit is needed for crude type A whereas, for E it is enough if you do it in 730 degree Fahrenheit. So, there is this difference of temperature during production that also will cause changes in the rheological behavior during the conditions field conditions ok. And now, one of the classic examples that we can actually see as to if you look in terms of the bitumen percentages as well as the chemical composition. In fact, some of the terminologies that are listed here may or may not be uh, appreciated by you at this point of time because we still have not introduced as faultins, polar aromatics, naphthene aromatics and saturates, but nevertheless it will be useful for us to understand that the chemical composition of bitumen as well as the specification parameters there is a big mismatch. So, that means, you can actually look at crude type E let us say we produced it targeting 2000 points and this is the chemical composition that you are going to see and the crude type A which was also produced by us for a targeted viscosity of 2000 the chemical compositions are completely different. Why? Because this comes from a lighter crude this comes from the heavier crude and this is the analysis chemical composition analysis that is carried out by the refiners they call it as the SARA analysis saturates as aromatics resins and asphaltins. So, this is more or less the procedural combination that is used. 
So, when you look at the chemical composition and since the cut point of A and E are completely different, while you will get the same viscosity, the chemical compositions are going to be different and the interesting point is you can actually look at the penetration values at 25 degrees centigrade. I am going to assume that all of you know what is a penetration test. At 25 degrees centigrade, the penetration value of this material is 50 whereas the penetration value of this material is 130. Now, this is very very interesting and this will become later very clear when we are talking about the viscosity grade or the penetration grade. You will later come to know that bitumen that is processed from crude source A is a much better and superior material compared to bitumen that is processed from crude source E. Okay. So, that will become later as we clear as we go along. So, some of the uh, information related to this particular chart is uh, given here and you may want to really understand some of these things. Crude type A is high in saturates and low in polar aromatics and asphaltines. Crude type E is low in saturates and high in polar aromatics and asphaltine. So, when you are going to have an asphalt from type A, you are going to have a low penetration and low viscosity at 175, 275 degree Fahrenheit is nothing but 135 degree centigrade and you will also be interesting to see that the low pen ratio and the low viscosity after aging. So, this is something we will talk later and asphalt from type E is the hay for the same consistencies and asphalt from type C is somewhere intermediate. Okay, right. And you will also know that the molecular weight is also higher for type A crude and the lower cut point will actually have opposite effect in the, which means is if you have a very high cut point, you have very higher hydrocarbon boiling points and higher molecular weights. But one needs to understand that if the crude type changes, these results will change and they not necessarily be the same here. So, I am just going to show you some caricatures on how bitumen is, is processed. These are all commercial bitumen manufacturing routes. So, let us quickly go through each one of them. So, I get a crude, I go to atmospheric distillation and from there come to vacuum distillation. VR is vacuum residue. So, one portion from the vacuum distillation goes to a soft bitumen. So, that means if you really want a VG10 material, you can adjust your cut point in your vacuum tower to straight away get your, let us say, a VG10 material. Okay. Then when you get your PPA and in fact PDA or PPA are one and the same. This is propane precipitated asphalt or propane de-asphalted residue. So, you get a PPA here and which basically goes to a blower feed here. You can actually have a combination of a PPA that goes, you can actually even use this to get your straight and soft or you could use a combination of VG310, PPA and either blend them and send it or use them in a blowing condition. So, this is the combination of the process that is normally used. Again, this is a very interesting picture because you get a crude oil here, long residue and from there we get a short residue, straight away you get your 1800 bitumen and then you slightly blow it to get a 40-50 bitumen, but if you really want a 60-70 bitumen, you take the material that comes from this 40-50, mix it with 80-10, add some little bit of kerosene here to correct to get your 60-70. That is also another way of doing it. There is one more way that is shown here, you can actually take a look at it. Right? So, finally, the idea is there are several manufacturing routes that are possible. You can reduce it to grade. You can get a low viscous material 
and a high viscous material and do a acid blending. You can take a high viscous material and blend it with the gas oil. You can take a low viscous material and blend it with PPT bitumen or you could take this low viscous material and air blow it to grade. So, in India we are going to be talking only about two types of process what generically called as air blowing and component blending. So, these are the two process that are followed here. So, depending on the specifications that are available in place, one could get whatever grades that you want and it is also possible that you may not be actually get some of the desired uh, bitumen of the rocket specification and in fact, it is a big complaint from the refineries because some of the crudes cannot really produce bitumen of the rocket specification. So, normally this is a way in which it is done. So, you have viscosity at 60 degree centigrade and penetration at 25 degree centigrade. You can actually see if you have a crude A, you please refer to the earlier slides, the penetration of 50 and crude E having a penetration of 230 for the same viscosity of 2000 points. So, such things are possible. So, unless you do some process for crude E, you may not be really be able to match the required penetration that is needed from the specification. So, if you are looking at the summary of the processing of bitumen, the crude petroleum, these are some of the key words in its makeup distillation fraction as well as in its bitumen content. Straight reduction is the first step by distillation, solvent deasphalting, supercritical extractions or other process that are used and if you really want to meet the specifications, you need to have a combination of blending, air blowing, use of flux and many other process are needed. So, what we discussed in this lecture is, we understood that asphalt is one of the oldest construction material. We also know that the physical and the chemical structure of asphalt can actually be quite complex. In fact, we will be discussing this in the lecture on chemistry of bitumen and we also discussed the refinery process. So, thank you very much for your time.